Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is episode 176, starting part one here. We've got a um, kind of a special thing, in my opinion. We've, we've had it before. We've had listeners um, in the garage or on the podcast, but we are joined by, if you guys do follow along, we're live on Facebook Live, especially. We have Ian Sean Anderson, goes by Sean, and uh, he is a uh, longtime supporter of the podcast, listener. Long time uh, contributor to the conversation. Um, more and more, I feel like. <laughs> Long way to put it. Yeah. More as the uh, night goes on. He's in from, from you're, what part of Tennessee, right? Yeah, Kingsport. What, was it? Kingsport. Kingsport? Yeah, so it's not, not too far from uh, Johnson City. Yeah. Uh, about an hour and a half above Johnson Okay. Uh, if you people like NASCAR, I live four miles from Bristol Motor Speedway. There you go. That puts it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So if you know where Bristol's located, uh, I'm four miles from the track. Okay. The track technically is outside of Bristol. Bristol is a little city on the border of Virginia and Tennessee. The state line runs right down Main Street. So half of it is in Virginia, half of it's in Tennessee. Okay. So you're in town with the family, right? Correct. Visiting family, correct? No. 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 Just, just visiting with family here. Right. Okay. What brought you into Columbus? Uh, my stepson and daughter both have birthdays in July. Okay. My daughter just turned four on the fourth. Yeah, and he turns nine on the seventeenth. Okay, so they have too much stuff in the house anyway. It's like I'm going to have to build them a building for their stuff. Yeah, uh, and so. Uh, I don't, I'd heard that the zoo had like, got bigger. You know, I come up here a lot. I, I do have family that lives up here. Yeah. Uh, so for the birthday, I just thought I'd bring them we'd go to the zoo. And what I remember is Wyandotte Lake, but I guess yeah. they bought and turned it into the rides and doom yeah. zoo bees. Oh, that bay. thing I spent all day cooking at today. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, so we're up here doing that. And then, uh, like I say, the wife gave me this, uh, trip to three boy farms distillery and so i thought since we were up here and uh i was coming weekdays not weekend i was like ah, you know i'll just get a few bottles and drop it off since y'all do this absolutely to review it so well we're happy then and i was like do you want to be on it you're like uh yeah sure that'd be great <laughs> oh, well yeah you know i if he was all right i didn't you know no, i think it's fantastic and it'll be interesting because uh, it's always different when we have someone on that's just going to kind of share stories and 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 part two but uh i know you're not a, a huge huge cigar smoker you smoke cigars fairly regularly correct uh, yeah drink more uh oh no, we, we we talk about drinking now uh -huh. uh, i probably not i'm not as much as a cigar smoker though. i used to smoke three or four a day okay but now with the little one i'm probably one five six days a week okay maybe but still pretty regularly yeah, just like, not as not yeah, as i say those, those nights like i said when i you gotta let the demons have their way yeah i can't sleep yeah and i'm out on the porch i do it because it, i don't know it's sort of meditative okay sitting around smoke store you be alone i got you yeah well before we get too far into this um and for those watching along i noticed as soon as we start recording stream yard starts functioning like i don't like it to so hopefully the uh, connection will pick up here guys sorry about that but i do want to thank our sponsors uh, tinderbox at easton for the party guest heritage which is what we're featuring tonight thank you tinderbox at easton uh, those available along with other party gifts from um uh at tinderbox so now until next week it'll be 15 percent off the party guest heritage come on check it out also want to thank Altist usa we've got some uh, romeo julieta Reserve out in the Rockwoods, which we featured before. So hopefully you guys uh, can check that out as well. Great one, AJ Fernandez makes that. And then also via Cigar Company, we should have the goals in this month. The silvers are available now. So come in and check those out as well at the Tinderbox. He's in or call, and we can ship some out to you. Uh, Sean, when you were, um, I forget when that was, it's been a long time now. We, within the last year, we uh, sent some out to you as well. A few months. Is it just a few months? think so i don't know i think it's like Shit, I, I think it was last year it was last year retired but not even last year i think i think it was after you, oh, you, you know, first that's like your rating thing. I, I could swear i didn't start watching this till 
January, February, but I guess it had to be before that. I think it was. I think yeah. it was last year. But anyways, check them out. Also, uh, if John isn't a member, both Johns are actually of uh, the uh, patreon.com slash RMBS podcast. So please uh, check that out. Finally got him a shirt that I think fits. Oh, yep. See, I told uh, I told him there, I have to leave this because then I won't have nothing to knock on you. But... <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever works for you. So, um, yeah, I, thank you guys. Well, Patreon.com slash Bird and BS podcast definitely helps out. Um, it helped us uh, go down to Louisville. Nate and I uh, recently met up with Elena from uh, Bourbon and Blonde. So uh, it helped us go there to see the distilleries. We were going to do a show down there. It didn't really work out, but it was nice that we did meet some good people down there. And uh, I learned a lot, and it's already translated to a, a bit of the show. So, guys, thank you very much for checking that out. Tonight, we are going to be drinking from a smaller distillery, right? Three Small boys. Small would describe it. Yeah. yeah, three boys bourbon. Craft. I call it a craft distillery. Craft distillery. They're not okay. really distributing yet. Okay. So you only really get it there. I got you. So yeah, um, and you went down there recently. I, I want to kind of just jump right into that. I'm gonna light up the Partagas Heritage in a second. You got a lighter here if you want to light up there. And then, uh, like I said, hopefully that connection improves so we don't have to restart this whole thing because it's really annoying. But uh, yeah, go ahead and tell us a little bit about this. We're we're drinking. We got three picks here. One is, uh, and there were what five barrels? Is that right? Um, yeah, four bourbons and one rye. Yeah, they do that for every tour. Okay. One guy told me. Okay, so this um, is, they're all very small batch. We got barrel three, which yeah, we have in the glass. All, these are all right out of the barrel, so. After that first one, really, what you want to do is, if you flip it, oh yeah, I can see, see, I can see, see the, some of those floaters, the floaters oh, wow, from yeah. out of the barrel. Nice. I mean, which I is what my granddad cool. always said: whiskey was meant to be drunk. But, okay. Uh, you know, I don't know. Definitely got some heat. So, tell us a little, little bit about Three Boys Bourbon from your perspective when you did the tour and everything else, where they're located, um, and, and just kind of a little bit about the tour you had there. Um, well, they're kind of off out of the way. Uh, technically they're in frankfurt um but now if you've been down to any of the tours if you've been to buffalo trace mm -hmm. they're probably about 20 minutes from the buffalo trace distillery okay so they're that's the area they're in and i met the head distiller there his name was hunter something he, he signed bottles uh, but, uh he was telling me something of his story i guess he started making alcohol because in the day he went to play baseball for king college yeah which is in a dry area of Kentucky. Okay. And so he started cooking, if I understood right, he started cooking beer in his apartment or his room. Sounds right. Sounds right. And just graduated from making beer to, you know, finishing the process. Yeah. Stealing. And it, it's something that one side of his family used to do. And so they just sort of kind of brought it back. But, they're, you know, they're small. They've been... Um, They've been open since I think they said 2012. Um, they do four or five different things. They make uh, these bourbons and rice, and then they're uh, you know ever since they legalized moonshine, if you sell it at 50, percent a lot of places do that. So they do that too. They're selling some of their white dogs flavored moonshine. They have like okay apple pie, which is like a right. probably a one big common one. Uh, oh yeah, uh, but now they did a pecan one that too sweet to drink but i smoked some pork butts yeah it, injected it, it in marinade. it and oh, made yeah. a barbecue sauce out of it it was amazing yeah <laughs> nice oh man uh, amazing so you know they do this and uh, like i say right now really the only way to get their whiskey is to understand it is uh to be on site and then uh what they do is uh you get to sample the five barrels Pick the one you like. Pick a different size bottle, and whatever size bottle you pick, you pay for that, and you fill it up out of the bottle. And that's it. Yeah, yeah it's all. It's whole, that's pretty cool. Whole same thing that uh, I forget the name. Whiskey ain't ain't process, but you know the copper tube they stick in the barrel to pull it out. The thief. The, the thief. thief. Yeah. yeah. So you get to work the whiskey thief yourself. Fill your bottle. That's, that's why cool. they're not quite the same. wasn't quite the same. Oh, I see. Yeah, you not know. quite the same fill. Right. Yeah. And so these are like straight out of the barrel. Uh, still have some impurities in them. Not watered down. Not cut to anything. Not not set down to like so, standard proof. Or not not limited. filtered whatsoever. No. No co filtering done there. <laughs> All right. So, so it does have a 
alcohol content up in there. It oh, is. It is. This first one's going to be 125.3 proof, according to the the bottle there. Yes. And why why did you pick these three? You, you said there was five, including a rye, five in a rye. Four in a rye. Four in a rye. Um, well, bottle four, really. Uh, I don't know if the people can see it, but you hold that in the light. I noticed that, it when we first said it. That Dark. barrel was probably charred more than they probably ordered it. I just love the color of it. I got you. Uh, it's one of the darkest I've seen in a long time. And um, and it tasted good. And then the first barrel uh, was kind of high on the corn content there, I think, if I remember right. You'd have to look at the picture I sent you. Yeah, so uh, barrel one is a 62% corn. Yeah, it so. was it was on the, the sweet side for me. Okay. And again, you know, now being an older guy, I still mm-hmm. like to feel like I'm tough. Fair. Right. So, like, you know, when I drink it, I want to know that I'm, you know, you feel I tough. want it to hold back. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Back. So, fight back a little bit. And then barrel two and three were fairly similar. Um, uh, in mm. the taste for me. Okay. And again, I'm not, I'm not a big palate guy. My snobs has been broken too much uh, for me to get them nights. I just know, like, I either like the way it tastes or I don't generally. Though, uh, uh, I don't know. This one had a. Uh, I don't know if you ever. You ever have anybody mix uh, maple syrup and peanut butter and jelly? No, I'm allergic to peanuts. So no. <laughs> no. I have not. So you never had peanut butter? I've never had peanut butter. Oh well. So I'm out. You guys continue to talk. <laughs> I had a friend when I was a kid that used to mix syrup and peanut butter and jelly for like a sandwich or just like for all in a sandwich. drink. Okay. Yeah. No, for your sandwich. I don't know. You're I don't like know why. Thing. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would that. put when I was at his house, I would eat it, but God, almighty, he was like, you talking about a sugar bomb. Uh, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. But this kind of has that. If you get past the alcohol, that kind of a peanutty. See, for me, I actually off the nose, I actually got uh kind of a toasted marshmallow okay, on the nose well. on the nose that's me but when you when you take when you take a sniff of it keep your mouth open because if you close your mouth all you're going to smell is alcohol it's just going to burn but if you have your mouth open a little bit the alcohol will come back out hey, well maybe it's toasted marshmallow i don't know i just thought it was kind of peanutty so between well, hey that two and three that's what did it for me this just kind of reminded me of it reminds you, yeah. Well, a little bit. the smell or the taste, or all of it. Uh, yeah, a little bit of the taste too. But the smell, and they say, obviously, you know that the uh, smell is really tied tightly to to memories. Right. So, well, in my case, you're right. Certain sounds or smells. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be around a bakery. Can't be around a bakery. No. Not when they're blooming yeast. Okay. It smells too much like a burning body. That's that's fair. I, I wouldn't know, but gotcha. Yeah, we're gonna get into more stories like that. I think here as we go forward. Right. So, <laughs> sorry, I might be jumping. The, well, I, it's all right. Look, you, you had somebody on real smart and like very smooth in their presentation last week. The rough back to pop. I'm yeah. kind of a haphazard kind of guy. It should be fun either way. Of, I just sort of take it as it goes. I got you. Well, we'll find out. This is always uh, it's always fun to first meet someone, talk to them several times. Um, but yeah, just have them on here and, and see where it goes. Um, but so with this bourbon, before we get too far into that, um, you guys toasted marshmallow and you said maple syrup and peanut butter and jelly. What kind of jelly? Grape. Again, you say it like grape. It, you say it like it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> grape no, berry. No, I'm a I'm a bigger fan of apple jelly personally. But I feel like that's a, a lesser you know, song hero right there. Apple jelly. Yeah. I think strawberry and grape kind of grape definitely wins out, and strawberry kind of just kind of yeah. it's always there. Oh, I always have apple jelly. In my, in my apple house. jelly. Yeah. I like apple butter. My well, see, apple you butter. make apple butter, but now my granddaddy taught me when I was a kid, you mm-hmm. take apple jelly and butter, equal parts, and mash it together with a fork and spread it on my grandmother's biscuits. Oh, and you want to talk about good boy? Yeah, that'll make you slap your mama. <laughs> All right, so, go ahead, Nate. I'm gonna light up this. No, so so on the whiskey. <laughs> On this particular bourbon, because Ian or Sean had actually sent us a picture of what they had at the 
distillery. So this is actually their oldest bourbon offering at that time. Uh, this is a seven-year bourbon. It has the lowest corn content of any of the four bourbons. It's a 58% corn, 32% uh, malted rye, and then uh, zero barley. No barley whatsoever. In it. Okay. Or actually, no, 10%. I, they make, they cross their dash and the one together. So 10% malted barley. And I was like, you have to have barley. Okay. And then I'm like, wait, that math doesn't add up. Oh, um, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so lowest corn content, but also the highest rye content of any bourbons. So low corn, high rye mash bill, which you definitely get some of that rye on the finish. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's there's a little there. That's the warm spice to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but with it being 125 proof, it's very oily as well. We talked about that a little bit after we came back from uh, the old Forster tour. Yeah. You know the higher yeah. proofs are gonna viscosity on it. It'll be more oily because it's less watered down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you mentioned on the previous podcast too about chewing bourbon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what my granddaddy taught me was, uh, if you wanted to know what it tastes like, you take that first sip and just swallow it, let it do its thing, and then within about thirty or forty-five seconds, before your nerves have a chance to reset, take that next sip and chew on it. Okay. But you have to do it before the reset happens. So, so as soon as you start, that's kind of a little different. As soon as you start talking about chewing it, I started chewing the pour that I had in my mouth already. God damn it, I tasted peanut butter. I swear to God. <laughs> and, I, suggest and I hate you. Wonderful. I hate you for that. It really is. It's not, it's not <laughs> well, going to work on me with peanut butter, I don't think. Well, I'm, you might even smell peanuts. I've smelled it, yeah. Well, I, okay, well. And that didn't have. Can't you imagine what, what it tastes like? I feel smell like, like? No, I mean, peanut butter, and I don't get much smell off. I don't get that close to it, first of all. The uh, dust uh, don't yeah, gotcha. get you. But it looks no, peanuts. not the dust. I just don't. I mean, that's, it's. That's got to be a shitty bar life. No, I, I figured it out. You ate a lot of pretzels, didn't you? So, first no, of all, you ate a lot of have, chips. I just drank. Um, oh, well, they don't, okay. they don't really do the whole peanut thing at bars in several years, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling my age here, huh? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they had it like at the Moose Lunch when I went there for a little bit, but I mean, other than that, I mean, you got what Texas Roadhouse? I don't eat that because they have peanuts everywhere. Oh, yeah, I get you. But anyways, yeah. I mean, I can go to a ball game and everything like that, but you're in open air, so I don't really smell it a whole lot. Peanut butter, like I said, I don't smell the jar. Um, yeah, well, I maybe it's got a whole lot. It's a function as far as you go to. I go to a lot of VFWs, Legions, well, Elks Clubs, yeah. things like that. Yeah, it's older people. Even older than me. <laughs> anyway, with, with this one, though, I will say, guys, for my first experience with Three Boys Bourbon, this is a really nice bottle. This is, this is enjoyable. It's got a, I mean, it's obviously got a lot of heat. I'm sputting my ass off already here because it's, it's still almost 90 degrees here in Columbus, Ohio right now. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a rule that we don't do rise like this, especially the barrel proof stuff um, either. If it's over like 50 it's, degrees, yeah. 60 degrees. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Well, yeah. no, because they're yeah, this is nice. It's, it's actually there's not a whole. It's not. It's not bitey. There's no. I mean, it's, it's got a. It's got that warm spice to it. Warm heat, but uh, it's 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 surprisingly for me, it's smooth. It's got a nice lingering finish to it, but it's definitely got some spice even in that. You know, it's kind of got. Uh, it's not a burn, but it's kind of a little bit of. Um, I don't know. It's like like I don't know what we said last week, but it's kind of the, the the baking spices to me and like some of the food flavors right there. I get a little yeah. bit of a on the finish, uh, almost like a, a cold medicine. Cold medicine. Yeah, that yeah, medicinal thick like Nyquil type of taste on it, like oh. like cherry Nyquil or something. Cherry Nyquil. Cherry Nyquil. That's a seller right there. Yeah, It'll definitely right. put you to sleep. It might make you feel good too. <laughs> now, It'll I'll, cure all your ills. I don't do a lot of medicines over off the counter. No, no, no I'm, I'm a, I'm my grand grandmother's kid. I'm still believing, like you know, cod liver oil, castor oil, hot really? toddies. Really, well, hot toddies, yeah. Yeah, but you drink a good hot toddy and get under four quilts, you'll sweat anything out. It's facts. It's facts. <laughs> what about your kids? Do you you not use medicine with your kids? Do the same no, thing. Hot no, toddy for a four year old. I listen to the doctor for it, but uh, they look. 
There's not one of my kids that didn't have whiskey rubbed on their gums while they were teething. Oh, there you go. Because that stuff that they gave us at the time would keep them quiet for about 15 minutes, and then they were screaming again. And when you're going to bed at midnight and getting up at 3.30 to go in for PT, you need what sleep you can get. And so I finally got fed up, and I said, hey, this is what my grandmother did. So I just take them in there and dip my finger in whatever bottle was open and rub it in there. Mm -hmm. Good solid two hours of sleep. (laughs) So (laughs) folks can say it's wrong, but, uh, you know, well, it works. works. <laughs> like we talk, yeah. I mean, whiskey's been, you know, uh, medicinal over the years, and there's a reason for that. Right. Let's go on. Do you guys not ready for the second one here? Yeah, I was. I was getting ready to open it. Yeah, go ahead and crack that one here. So, bottle number four is going to be a five-year bourbon, sixty-two percent corn, twenty-seven percent rye, and eleven percent malted barley. Okay. And it's uh, slightly higher. It's going to be at 126.9. Oof. <laughs> but first one had a good cork pop. Uh, that one was a little bit weaker. Yeah. Not, not, that's probably due to the bottler. <laughs> that was you. That was me. Now, are all these the same on the back here? The, uh, except for what they write in there. Yeah, they leave it. I think the so. story's the same. Okay, so. While you're pouring that, a few falls back, we harvested corn from Three Boys Farms bottom field. We paired it with uh, plump rye from Ooh. Tulaski Farm, wow. Michigan, and the best malt from Wisconsin to cook and on. ferment our signature mash. No. Five days later, we poured the clear whiskey into charred American white oak barrels at a bold 125 proof. At long last, we've chosen select barrels from our rich from a Rick house. At their peak in flavor, dark and rich with a touch of spice, raise a glass to slow perfected perfection, bottle one barrel at a time. Dude, Steve, you got to nose this one. Well, I, was, I was talking. I know, but the nose on this is so different. Um, yeah, say so between the color and the smell of that barrel four, again, I think, I think what happened with the barrel was probably charred a little darker than they ordered. Could be. I, well, you know, because that's where all the I'm color comes. Guy. That's where all the color comes but from. But I would, I've told people two things. Not that I'm much of a believer, but very different. More corn. What was the mash bill? Uh, so the first one was 58, 32, and 10. This one is 62, 27, and 11. So the mash bill is not that far off from each other, but this is a five year instead of a seven. Mm hmm. But oh my lord, the but of the two things I think heaven should smell like, this is one of them. <laughs> that is completely different. It is. I mean, I get this fruit and raisin on the nose. A little bit of floor, a little, little more floral on the nose, but it's yeah. This, I think it's more floral just overall. Even I'm, even though there's less know. rye in it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's apparent that there's less rye in it just from the flavor. I mean, like, well, you're to going, me, it's a lot more corn. You're going from 32% rye down to 27% rye. Yeah. The corn's going only from 58 to 62. So it's only 4% more corn. And then the, I'm the, just saying the flavor. I know. The, wow. I haven't, well, I haven't tasted it yet. I see. I hate to tell you what, what I eat that I like that, that this kind of reminded me of. But have you ever had a... You're not allergic to butter, are you? I'm not. Just the peanut part of that peanut butter. Okay. So, uh, them Thomas's cinnamon raisin bagels, mm-hmm. toasted. Yep. With just a little bit of butter on it. Yep. I, it, I, this, I, I, don't, I don't know. Pretty I'm, specific, but this, I, I can kind of see it. Yeah. Yeah. This this whiskey is absolutely delicious. A little higher proof, slightly, but. I think less heat on the back end. Oh man! But the flavor is just so intense. It is very intense. I actually, uh, I'm, I think I'm unpopular opinion here. I, I'm just enjoying the first bottle a bit more. It's definitely more of my alley. I, that's fine. Well, I appreciate that. Right. That's why I try to tell somebody <laughs> when you start talking about opinions. My opinion is never wrong. It's for me. It's now, fair. We can talk about the facts that base the opinion. And maybe maybe them might be skewed a little, but my opinion's not wrong. Correct. I mean, it can be. 
to other people without what you're saying. Right. Well, see, the problem this is, is... I'm sorry. This says seven year on the barrel three. Uh-huh. Um, slightly different match bill. And then barrel four does not have age on there. Does it say on that, that chart five. there? Five. Five year. Okay. Five year. I don't want to say I can tell it tastes younger, but I thought it, it tastes younger than that. This... Okay. And I'm... I'm again unpopular opinion here this is well, i understand that. Yeah, thank you for again the validation of i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna say that this tastes more like some of the either high corn or the ones that are accelerated in aging as opposed to the traditional method to me to me and maybe it's coming from the the first one to this one uh to me it doesn't taste as it doesn't taste as artificial or as rushed as some of those do. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just no, saying this, this is definitely where I'm at. Take your little sip of water and swish it around and then drink it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, yeah, the flavor on this one has, I think, for me, more food flavors on this than the first one. But Mellows it out a little bit, Sean. But, no, that, that finish is, is not agreeing with my palate oh, okay. compared to the first one. Sorry about that. I no, will no, say no, I, like, hey, I, I love it. Thing. I will say, uh, if you just talk about the finish, I do like the way the first bottle kind of grabs you. Warm. I like that. That warm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I drink it like this. Yeah. This uh, has got like a tart tartness to it. Yeah. This one mm -hmm. is, uh, but I just, you know. Do you know what I'm saying with that? You mm -hmm. just can't. You just, you know, that's just a beautiful color. Oh, like, it whatever is. they did there. Uh, and like I say, bourbons for opening and, you know, sharing. That might be one of the few bottles I've ever seen that might just be for looking through. <laughs> just leaving it in there. Do you see what I'm saying about the tartness, though? I do. I do. I do get that. Got a little tart. Maybe that's what I'm. What I don't enjoy. Not not like sour or anything like that. But that's kind of like the sensation I'm getting in the back right here. Um, on some that of those, finish. Some of those fruit flavors coming out on yeah. the finish. More like a Granny Smith apple. Than yeah. Like honey crisp. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's and that's maybe what I'm getting there. Where I, uh, to to your point, Sean, like the first one, that barrel three is, it had that kind of warm, warm spice on the finish, and that's much more enjoyable, at least for for me, if I was gonna be picking these. Now it's it's interesting though because it is all coming from the same distillery, it's just different barrels and different slightly different mash bills, but it is a cool process to see that this all came from the same day, same tour, and everything else that you so, you're able to pick same, these. Same day, same tour. And it shows also that doing these things, you know, for a lot of people, like even just this little brief. Uh, going from bottle three to or barrel three to barrel four, there had to be people in this tour, just like a lot of tours, that people are going to really gravitate towards one, and then other people in the group are going to gravitate towards others. Yeah, well, so it was interesting because I, was, like I said, I was talking to the guy there because I was like, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm getting your product here, but I'm, I'm gonna put it on a podcast. They're going to review it, so I just yeah. want to make sure you know you want to go be like perturbed. Uh, hey, you know, just courtesy. Yeah. What they say? And uh, oh, he he was all for it. He he was happy about it. Nice. Uh, but I will say, as I stood there uh, and let him tell me his story and watched, uh, Barrel One had the most hits in what what people were buying. Yeah. But like I say, for me, that first barrel was just kind of. Which barrel was the the barrel? Barrel, barrel One. Really was getting them for the people that Most were there. Interest there and it was another thing mm -hmm. was cool because i make sense I took looking my, at the description of it yeah i took my dad with me and um so we were just sort of standing there he had never been uh, i thought it'd be you know he's a beer guy yeah um and sadly blended canadian whiskey so you know we don't bobby hirschman would be a big fan of that uh wouldn't he uh -huh. yeah well he's a big crown guy if you recall that's my dad Big crown guy also? Oh, God, yes. Uh -oh. Horrible. <laughs> God awful. But, you know, to each their own. That's what he likes. Yeah. Uh, but I took him with me. Uh, and uh, when I told him which barrels I was going to pick, he's like, well, everybody else is getting it out of that other barrel. I said, well, that's everybody else. Right. Um, but it probably was getting the most. And after barrel one, I would say um, this barrel four – it's kind of a tie between barrel four and two of what people were buying. Yeah. And since we drove ourselves and wasn't part of it, there must have been, I don't know, 
five or six buses pull in there of the you oh, know, wow. tours that you do. Yeah. Uh, so we were there while three of them went through. Like the girl that gives the tour did it three times in the time we were there. Uh, so uh, barrel three and the rye barrel wasn't getting near as much love. Maybe because it's that warm spice. I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, you know, I don't I don't know if there's a lot of people that drink whiskey like whiskey that grabs hold of you. Yeah, I get I, I think the general I, consumer probably not. Yeah. I you know, I just just you know, and that's just from you know hanging around people and drinking and stuff. Uh generally when I have guys over and start pouring like this, the you know, they'd always ask for like some sort of mixer. Really? Oh yeah. Um now, not so much in cigar shops. Right. But like the few people that come to my house, uh they're not they're not much into drinking whiskey gotcha. neat or straight. Or, you know, I told them, you know, just just throw one piece of ice in there. Yeah. Because right. you know, you throw one piece of ice in there and just there's something about it. It just starts to melt ever so exquisitely. And so when the edges start to curl, you know, and it's just released a little bit of water, then you know it's it's good. And then it chills the whiskey off. It won't burn so bad. Yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah. You try to tell them, but you know, they, they still want to throw it in Coke and you know Sprite. And, and this isn't the type of bottles you want to do that with, typically, in my opinion. When we were on, on some of the tours and stuff like that, um got endemic out here getting Seriously, getting a, mixer uh, friends. <laughs> Anne was the one last week. That yeah, you were, you were commenting hey, how great I, it was to hear from her. And to, to uh, her point, if you get through these bottles, there's a few more from your favorite local distillery. He he has tried the bottle and bond already. Yeah, I, yeah, I love that stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. I uh, I feel bad following you actually, since you was on here, and I really wouldn't call them friends or acquaintances. <laughs> well, they're over to your house to drink your whiskey. Well, you know, I. I I do have a significant other in there too. Oh, she, she knows people. She knows people. <laughs> so, she's know. the social word. Well, I wouldn't call it, but you know, we entertain some. So, yeah. Uh, it's just like we're having a big barbecue pool party Saturday after we get back. I'm like, really? It's right when you get back, entertain. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's, uh, you guys want to do the, the rye here? Oh, yeah. Go and open it up, well. Chief. Well, I was going to talk a little bit about the cigar, but... Yeah. Okay, I was going to talk about the barrels that he was talking about. Go ahead. While I finish off my glass of barrel Go ahead. four. Go ahead, so, man. barrel one that he was talking about, five-year, 66% corn, 26% rye, 8% barley, 105.6 proof. That's the weakest one. Barrel two, six-year, 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% barley, 111.5. And then we've already talked about barrels three and four. Now the rye that we're doing, 66% rye, 29% malted rye, 5% malted barley at 118.2. So this is the weakest of the three. Of the three we have here. Yes. Yeah. But this is also an eight-year. This is the oldest bottle that we have on the table and old, also the oldest bottle they had available when Sean did the tour. All right. All right. All right. And Demick says, uh, if, if people are into mixers, the good bottles are not coming out. Well, I guess you don't want to hear about the fact that I, I gave somebody a pour of a 23 Pappy that they pour Coke in. <laughs> Probably not. Hey, there's there's a uh, there's a bar in Kentucky that the guy had joked about if he ever got a bottle of Pappy 23 in the lottery, he was going to make jello shots with it. Mm. And, sure, it. and sure enough, he got a bottle and he goes, no, I'm going to st stay true to my word. So sure enough, he made Jello shots with Pappy. I like that. <laughs> if you say you go, oh, let's see. I offered it. I didn't bother to say, no, you're going to drink this how I think it should be drunk, or are you going to do it the way you want to? But, I feel you know, like you knew what was going to happen. I, well, no, if you know that person, I didn't really know him. He was, uh, he was a newbie, and I'd already started pouring it. And he's like, oh, I want some. I want some. Is so, that Jack? Yeah, he could, you know, he could have went with the <laughs> Wild Turkey 101 or the right. Russell's Reserve right. or right. the George Dickel 15 year old that was sitting yeah. there. Any of them, I wouldn't, you know, pouring Coke in it probably wouldn't. Have, and you know, if you want pour Coke and Pappy, you know, if that's your thing, I'm not going to knock you. I, you know, I wow. used to drink that stuff back in the day when you could get it for eighty dollars a bottle. 
right before the secondary market went nuts. I know before the asshole wrote that article. Uh, ah, yeah. excuse my French. That's uh, your good company uh, here. You know, uh, so that's like I was trying to tell somebody: you want really good marketing, then uh, you get somebody to write that this is the best stuff on the planet. And then in a five-year period, I think it went from eighty bucks a bottle to the last few bottles I bought were like three eighty. Yeah, yeah. I think I think MSR. So now you can't get them. Period. Unless you're on a waiting list or win the lottery, or yeah. you buy them off the internet at like five grand a bottle. We yeah, had an man. offer out there from Ann says, send me yours. I'll make jello shots. <laughs> so next time you're in town, bring the bottle of Pappy and we got some jello shots coming out. You know, you a lot of hate mail on that one, I bet you. Uh, I might she, take you, you, I might pick you up on that. She didn't say she'll make jello shots with Only the Pappy. If you share it. She, made, she may make jello shots on the Pappy. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, you got to clarify. Are you going to make uh, it out of the Pappy or? <laughs> She's gonna drink the pappy and then make the Jello shot. Right. Uh, this one is is clearly gonna be different. Have you had you you've had all these obviously? Yeah. Nate, you just took your first sip of the rye. What are your thoughts on that? That is pleasant. Yeah. Ninety ninety five percent rye, eight year, which yeah. we we've had some other ryes on the in the past, and you know a lot of those tend to be. You know, two to four year type of rise. Recently, we had that Magnolia's Pike, yeah. which was a bottled and bond rye. So that was four year, hundred proof. This is eight year, one hundred and eighteen. But uh, yeah, I I like this one a lot too. Yeah, this this is this is very enjoyable. Um, and I, I'm surprised. I'm still kind of surprised that. Well, I guess I should because there's one rye I brought on two years ago that was. Same type of thing. It was a 95% rye, but it was a 10 year bottle, but it was so light. Like it was one of those that drinking, like I, we first drank it in February and then I saved it for the summer. Which one was that? The Masterson's. Oh yeah. The Masterson's. Because it was so light. We're like, I think we could drink this on this hot summer day. And sure yeah. enough, we did. I don't know if it's all the talk about the Coke and Cola and all that stuff floating around here, but I mean, this has got like that kind of, it's, it's, it's warm. It's not burned, but it's got a lot of like, it's like a weird spice, but it almost that first sip after the last one, and we're talking about Coke and all that stuff. And you said the power of suggestion earlier, Sean. Right. I mean, it almost tasted carbonated the way it hit the back of my throat. <laughs> yeah. Did it not? <laughs> you know, a little maybe. I, I mean, this this is a very different rye from any rye that I've drank. Well, you know, I I'm not a Sean, you gotta try this one. Expert, but now, wow, this—if you've ever had tastes like syrup. real maple syrup. So not, there's a sweetness to this, not, right? A little bit in there. Yeah, there's a little in there. It's hiding. It, you know, it it doesn't. You know, it just kind of sneaks up on you. It says, "Hey, this is going to burn a little, but here's your little, just a little sugar to wet your yeah. tongue." Yes, and then burn again. Yeah. Uh, and Ray Chester says Steve doesn't like the spice. Uh, actually, on the contrary. I, that I do like this. That's what I'm saying. Um, that's, this this kind of has more of that. Yeah, like a the other stuff, like a toasted brown sugar. Yeah, type there's, of a, sweetness. there's a sweet but a spice. Yeah. The barrel four did not have much spice at all. It was more no. that like corn sweetness to me, which I, I actually these two the the first and the third one that we're doing. So the barrel three and then the the iri, I think it's more warm spice, which actually raised. Well, maybe I'm not conveying that very well, but I I, I enjoy that more. Or if you ever had, uh, well, you, I, well, I don't know if you had, but if you ever had uh, hot apple cider with some moonshine and yeah. Cairo syrup and molasses, how about uh, that's that's how my yeah. grandmother used that's to. Called recipe, yeah. Well, you know, my grandmother used to make this thing. Of, uh, this is, yeah. We call we'll call it tea because I don't know what else to call it, but it was just stuff that she went out on the mountain and picked, so like some blood root and sassafras birch bark. Yeah, and saying yeah. To boil that. Yeah, and that, that, well, that, was, that was the base of her hot toddy, was the roots that she found off this, the mountains. You know, it, it, and it, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, well, but if you ever been around when they they make maple syrup mm -hmm. before it's actually in the bottle, I have not. Oh well, so, I've but, I've never tasted it before. It was real maple syrup, not like the stuff you buy in Kroger. Right. Talk about uh, like when they cook but it. The smell, yeah. That's what have you ever here. been around? Uh, Sugar cane, it's a little bit 
too old. It's been freshly cut. I don't know. I grew up in the suburbs, Sean. You know, <laughs> they don't they don't, don't grow much sugar cane in the uh, neighbor's Columbus, yard would get a little long at times, but that's about the yeah the fields. Miguel every... could probably speak to <laughs> the sugar. Cane. I see it, but I know what you're talking. About. Like I, I get it. Yeah, you know, I get the example. A, I mean, you know, you would think you would think there would be nothing sweet in this glass. I'm telling you, there you is think, though. But there's just there's just something there to just mm -hmm. sort of paint you just a little bit. It's like a tease. Well, I Not almost, much. it almost says that that after dinner port type of a thing where is kind of where I'm getting that, that sweetness. A wine? Yeah, like a port. Oh, I don't drink wine. Well, then, see? <laughs> Look, I see, don't I'm drink, trying to understand the sugar cane that was cooked a little bit too long. I'm trying to understand, okay. you know, so, being out in the maple syrup, uh, you know, factories or whatever when they're cooking it. Don't, and then I say only, something like wine, and you're just like, no, fuck that. What? No, I'm not, no, I'm not saying fuck <laughs> Look, no, that, okay. So if it's if it's homemade muscadine or blackberry wine, I'll drink it. Okay. Uh, if it's uh, Kool-Aid that you pour two cups of sugar in and put the lid on and let it sit in your closet for a few weeks and bleed it a little, that's good wine. I'll drink it. I, I, I wasn't <laughs> talking about that. that never had a bottle of wine that you bought at a store and took the cork out of that I'm like, oh, I'll drink that again. Like your steak and wine Sundays, <laughs> couldn't do it. Uh, but I, you know, I say I, I was telling him I, you know, I gave up drinking beer when I graduated high school. Oh. <laughs> um, but mostly because at our senior party, John Daly Jr. over here. No, that's not it. No. Now see, and I'm an I'm an anomaly. Yeah. I would not tell people to drink like I drink. But I've never been sick. I've never had a hangover. I've never thrown up. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, and it doesn't matter if I've had two drinks or a whole bottle. Never, ever, ever, um, uh, on anything. Um, uh, but you know, when I was in college, I used to drink all the juice out of a jalapeno jar if they put two hundred dollars on the table. <laughs> and one, makes one, sense. you know, not sip it, just swallow it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but I quit drinking beer because we were getting ready for our senior party. And everybody used to go down to Peanuts, who had all these refrigerators in his garage, 20 bucks for a 12 back. And Peanut was the guy you were talking about before the podcast. Like, you don't even know his, I don't really know his name was. His he real name is called yeah, Peanut. I don't know he, he had 40 refrigerators in his garage. 40? <laughs> yeah, full of 12 packs. $20 a 12 pack. He'd sell them to all the kids. Um, now, <laughs> this is what, this is what I figured out. Peanut's still with us? Do we know? No, probably not. He was kind of old back in that day. Yeah, but those those are the ones that live forever. <laughs> probably. Yeah. He's probably you know embalmed. He's probably still selling them to the probably. high school kids right now. <laughs> I figured out. Now he's old you man Where I'm from in my day, high school was eighth grade to twelfth grade. Okay. So I could have went over to June Bugs Barn <laughs> and got a jar of shine, any kind of wine I wanted for free, and drink it. Really? We had to be like the adults, you know. Our parents drank Bud Light, Budweiser, stuff like that. That's what we wanted to drink. Sure. So we, I paid peanut twenty bucks for a twelve pack, two three times a weekend. Sometimes right. for more than one twelve pack. I figured out I must have gave that dude a lot of five thousand dollars in five years. That's, <laughs> That's a why lot he's of money doing when you're well, a teenager. Man. And back then, because so, you said you're old. Someone cut yeah. a lot of lawns. And so <laughs> I was damn. I was like, you know what? I ain't paying no more money for beer. So I just don't. I don't buy it. Think, now think about how much you spent and all the other kids that did. I mean, no, peanuts was, was rolling it. Killing. I should have just did what peanut did. I should have stayed in my hometown and just put refrigerators in my garage. And sold to kids. Yeah, no problem. There's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? I mean, if you get caught. Well, you know. Penis I always, ever, I always, penis I always, did, did he do some time? I don't think so. But see, again, back in my day, being from a little podunk town with a stop sign, say, whoa. You didn't get arrested. <laughs> if you got picked up by the cops, they took you home because they knew your dad was going to beat your ass. With Everything was a worse. suggestion. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, like, come on, I'm taking you home. Oh, no, take me to jail. Uh, no, I'm taking you home. God, please take me to jail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Taking you home. <laughs> Damn. That's amazing. I've never heard that. You know, I've heard the the the, the one stoplight kind of town and all that stuff, but I've never heard the no, we had one stop sign said, said whoa, whoa. <laughs> never. That, that's never a that's a t-shirt. That <laughs> never heard that. That's great. Sorry. No, no why I, you never I, apologize? That's, that's awesome. Well, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a force of habit. Uh, yeah, I like talking like I talk because when you talk like I do, people automatically deduct like a hundred IQ points from you. Uh, that's <laughs> not gonna right. happen on here. Maybe out in the audience, but not but, in the garage. You know. My granddaddy always told me never tip your hand too early in a card game. Yeah. So when you talk like you probably I don't talk, even have an accent really in real life. 
No, I don't. Is that your real voice? <laughs> no, I just, I just make it up. Where are you from, Chicago? Uh, <laughs> Boston. <laughs> not hardly. Hey, you know, look, no, I, it's not, and, you know, I, 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 I'd give you shit, but it's, you know, it's not like I hate Yankees. I don't have a problem with Yankees. I had a friend that hated Yankees. Yeah. Every morning he got up and read the obituary columns to all the major new cities in the north. Wow. He hated Yankees. And you're not even uh, that far south, south enough, I guess. Yeah. That's, well, I'm uh, from the capital of the Confederacy, technically. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. Technically, but it, you know, it's as how are things there these days? <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in Virginia no more. There you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> but you know, like say, you know, to each their own. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. I'm a firm believer in like, as long as you're not abusing anybody mentally or physically, you ought to be able to do what you like to do, and nobody come along and bother you about it. I agree. I, I agree to 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 a point, obviously. You know. All right, Steve. What? <laughs> Cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So this is the Partagas heritage. If you guys are familiar with the, the name Partagas, it is it's got Cuban roots. Um, but and they, they kind of did that with this. The yeah, Partagas. We're on the rye. Yeah, I was gonna have you yeah, I was gonna try have you try that one. Uh, so Partagas Heritage, you look at this red band on there. It's very reminiscent. I think that's why they did it with the, the heritage name. It's reminiscent to like the uh, Partagas series, the, the Cuban lines, right? Like Serie D, Serie E. Mm. It's got a very, they, they all have like the basic red band with this kind of uh, font on there and, and very, very simple packaging. I did not uh, I'll have this on the screen for you guys, but I'll show you. That's the box it comes in. So it's very, very uh, like a classic wooden box with some gold leaf kind of. Um, it's 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 very it's when they, everybody turns into banjos or purses. It's, it's very simple yeah yeah so it'd be a great one for like a guitar like a cigar box guitar very simple very classic and that's again the heritage so it's very traditional you're right there sean yeah I was just. <laughs> do you want to make a comment you want to grab that mic he, or, he, or are you he's away by how good this rye is i just had the what are you looking at no it's this bottle i know but i just had the bottle on mine yeah. Is this mic on? There you go. Now your mic's so on. I had the bottle and Other side of the mic. I had the bottle and bonnet from Watershed uh, just now. You guys had last week and just tried the rye, and it's, I mean, there's a little bit of kick with the, with the bottle and bond, but oh my God, this is unbelievable. This, this is, this is, uh, you know, like almost not, this is like nine and a half percent higher. Really? 118 percentage. versus 100. Yeah, 118 versus 100. Yeah. Well, and again, 100. this is a, it's a higher rye. Versus that, you know, the bottle and bond from Watershed. But I would, right. I see what you're kind of saying. This is like an amped up version of some of the the spice and the warmth, in my opinion. Right. So you're kind of saying, or yeah. Well, I felt this was the water. The bottle and bond was a little bit spicier. Okay. In comparison to the rye, I mean, I just was just drinking that. And I could, there's some heat to it, and then I just switched over the rye, and you could definitely just, it's a lot smoother for me. Really mm. smooth. I can't <laughs> wait to sit back down and drink more. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, so with the Partagas Heritage. Um, this is a four country blend. Let me make sure I get this right because there's a lot of info here. Uh, but this is going to be a um, Honduran, they call it Osa, right? So it's, uh, I want to say this wrong, probably Alancho San Agustin. Uh, so yeah, O S A. So like the, if people are familiar with the CAO Osa, that's going to be where they got the OSA. Uh, but that's the wrap relief on here. And uh, then it's got a Connecticut broadleaf binder, which I thought was really interesting. I did not realize that when I first smoked a cigar in the past, but it's got a Connecticut broadleaf binder, which is probably giving it some depth there. And then it has Honduran, Dominican, Mexican filler. So again, not exactly what you would expect. And I'm of the opinion it's not what you would expect from something that has a very iconic Cuban heritage and it uses the name heritage and it uses this old school uh, marketing that is an ode to a 100% uh, Cuban puro that you've got a four country blend that you're not only using like obviously Honduran and Dominican, but you're bringing Connecticut broadleaf and also Mexican San Andreas into it. Um, it's very unique in my opinion, as far as the blend makeup on that. Yeah. I don't, I don't find anything Cuban about that. No, no, sure, no, no I'm no. saying the marketing. is. Yeah. Yeah. And real quick, Hey Ray, my my daddy didn't. My grandmother, who was four foot ten, the meanest woman I ever met in my life, used to make me go cut my own switch, and it had to be three switches that wouldn't break when she used them. And then she had to stand there and watch her peel them and break them together and tie the end together with a rubber band. And that's what she got you with. Oh, 
right. and if you didn't do that, it was whatever was handy. Did it make extension you, cord? Did it make you behave better? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just made you more careful. Okay. Yeah. Try not to get, <laughs> caught, to get caught. No, I get yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, she got me once with. Well, I won't tell you what they were called. Now they call them a hot water bottle, but you know that hose from a hot water bottle. Yeah. Like back in the day when it was the other product. Yeah, I remember I ran in one time and she. Told I don't me know what you're talking about. You don't. The hot water a, bottle. A hot water bottle used to be like a feminine hygiene thing. Ah, ah, right. Yeah. Has a hose on it. Gotcha. Know, oh, never mind. I forget that. Douche. Yeah, but you know. Anyway, <laughs> I came running in from playing, and she told me to do something. And I told her I would do it later. And by the time I went and got whatever I was wanting and headed back out the door, she stepped in the bathroom. Yeah. Snatched the hose out of that and got me with that. <laughs> but probably the worst thing I ever got wh whooped with was a razor strop. My oh. granddaddy had a razor strop on the side of the board. Yeah. Yeah. I got caught smoking one time when I was a kid. And uh, got Are you with a glutton a for punishment? Is that what we're getting at here? Yeah, you know, <laughs> maybe, but it's like I tried to say, it's like I tried to tell you that other day. You know, like I grew up in an age when, you know, we knew we could survive without the antibacterial wipe. Right. I feel like that's related somehow, but trying to piece that together. <laughs> uh, just, for, just for Ray. See, I feel bad because I like bantering with Ray because, like I say, most of my family, well, not most, but a big part of them is British. They still live in England. Right, right. And uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go over there in a couple of years when my daughter's old enough to remember the trip. Nice, nice. What do you think of the cigar? Oh, I like the cigar. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I thought it went... I thought it went better with the first bottle in the ride than it did the, hundred percent the the other bottle there, but uh, you know it, it's like anything else like like that whiskey, it's more about the ground the corn and the barley and the rye grow in right, and the water they make it with than really anything on that picture I sent you. Mm -hmm. Same thing with tobaccos. Yeah. I mean, growing up in Virginia, you know. I, I spent many an hour cutting tobacco for money as a kid, mm -hmm. hanging them in damn drying barns. Yep. Um, and it really had more to do with the soil. So you can take Cuban seed, but you take it to Honduras. That's not Cuba. That's not that same soil. It's not. But it's going to be different. And, and again, oh, yeah, it's different to to what we're talking about with these bottles here. Some people prefer it over the other. Oh uh, yeah. You know, it hits palace differently. Don't get me wrong. I've 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 been in. 80 plus countries. I've smoked plenty of Cuban cigars, real Cuban cigars, uh, from Cuba, grown in Cuba, made in Cuba, from Cuba. Period. Right. right. Uh, I've smoked some of them that are awesome. I've smoked some of them that I took a couple draws off and could have tossed it out the door. Terrible. It just, yeah. That's what I say too. There's good Cubans. There's bad Cubans. Good Nicaraguan tobacco. There's bad Nicaraguan tobacco. And it's always a business side of it too. People always forget that part of it when you're in the farming industry. Yeah. You know, it's not all going to be that that first choice wrapper leaf that you're growing. You know what I mean? You're going to have yeah. other stuff that you're going to have to blend that with something else. So right. that is something that, you know, there's a, a way to do that. There's a way to blend it. There's a way to price it as such. And, and you know, just the, the region or country it's coming from. Same thing with, you know, everything, the bourbon, if you will, coming out of um, Kentucky. Right. There's so many and different aspects of it. Not only where you're getting the, the grain. Right. You know, we're getting all this stuff, the farmers and their techniques. Then it's also every other step of the process. But it, all, it always goes back to the farming, in my opinion, yep. even, especially with tobacco. Even if the fertilizer and what kind of fertilizer exactly. you're using, how organic is it? You know, it's a difference between using cow manure and pig manure. I mean, it, it changes the every flavor. little bit. Everything, everything changes it. People don't people don't think so. But, you know. Why the tomatoes grown on one side of your yard taste good, and if you grow them on the other side of the yard, you just want to throw them away. Right. Soil, sunlight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's a changes. There's an animal over there pissing on it. Might, <laughs> might be. <laughs> you <laughs> never know what's happening. Neighbor's dog. Todd Conley says, "Yep, uh, good women and bad." I mean, it's everything. Right? Uh, people. I was going to say people, not just women, because I've I've met both. Both. <laughs> right. They're, All they're, right. right. Tobacco is just like people. Some of it's good. Some of it's not. That's right. Just. Mind if I have another sip out oh, of the yeah. barrel four because this is the yeah. one I didn't didn't care for as much as you guys. And as we get into uh, the the rounding out of uh, part one, I want to actually add a dash of water to this and see mm. if I like that better. 
because that is the hottest one too, right? Just barely one one twenty six point nine versus the barrel three at one twenty five point three. Yep. So I'm gonna see if I like this better. For those watching uh, right now, I don't know what is going on with Streamyard, but it's like in and out, in and out. But uh, hope yeah. you guys are still able to hear us okay. You don't need to see us, I guess. No, not this, not this mug. Hey, look, the best Maybe thing it's about you. Retire, it's me. It's just me. It don't like the way I sound. It might be. It might be that. But to finish that story, see, when you talk like I talk and deduct, deduct the high key points, see, when you walk right. with the most money or the prettiest girl, they always look like, well, what the hell happened? Yeah. <laughs> they don't get it. Part Funny two story, topic I, is, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, there's these women in Vegas passing out uh, religious friars, you know? Yeah. And, uh, of course, look, whatever you believe, you believe. That's fine. Uh, I used to have more faith than I do now, but uh, the world kind of kind of took that away. I got tired of hearing, well, you know, that's God's plan. Yeah. But if that's his plan, he can, you know what I mean? Right. Just saying. Uh, anyway, she was like, she they were passing out something. I said, no, thank you. And one of the women, it is, yeah, here's Christians for you. Like, oh, don't bother with him. He wouldn't want one anyway. Whoa. And, you know, me being who I am, I had to stop and be like, well, hold on a minute now. She just started a conversation. She didn't know she was. That starting. sounds like Steve, what Steve wants to do sometimes when the, the people. Yeah, I'm like the... kind of on your walk, you know. Them yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah. you know, I'm like, hold on now. Cause, like, you know, at one point in time, I, I led the explorers in the church. I used to take. When I was 17, 18, I'd take 11, 12-year-old kids up to the lake for two days, and we'd talk about stuff in the Bible and teach them how to fish and uh, how to live off the land, how to recognize trees and plants, things like that. Yeah. You know, I, I did all that. You know, I, I've come full circle. But I was like, so hold on a minute. You're telling me there, there's no hope for me? I'm, I'm pretty sure I was already fixed. He fixed everybody, if you believe. I said, so where, where do you think you're going? And she's like, oh. When the rapture comes, I know where I'm going to be. I'm just not sure where you're going to be. I said, well, when you get there, don't get too pissed off when God talks like I do. <laughs> Is that the end of the conversation? Uh, pretty much. Did you just like walk up, turn, mic drop, walk away? I wasn't really mic drop. I just, you know, <laughs> that she just, she just, you know, she had this look of ending, you know, like somebody who has bad indigestion. That, that reminds and me kind of like, that, 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 that kind of sounded like yeah, a yeah, yeah, big yeah. little bit. Well, so little I'm bit like, yeah. okay, I'm done. It reminds me of a Jeff Foxworthy bit where people were making fun of his accent. He goes, y'all going to be real surprised when you go to heaven. St. Peter goes, y'all get in the truck. We going up big house. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I don't I don't listen to too many country comedians. Don't, don't, don't don't do I, right I, no, I will have Jeff to say Foxworthy. when he, he told his story about my nipple got bit off by a beaver. That was Yes, funny. that was the headline on a paper. He goes, that's yeah. probably the only time the. Uh, words time nipple somebody... and, and beaver have been used and no one was offended right <laughs> oh let's not talk about offended oh my god um <laughs> big fan of ron white um <laughs> this is where we get to the end of part one here so uh, i did pour a little bit of uh, water just a couple like a dash there when we were doing the tasting maybe we should get one uh just a dropper for water here I, yeah i thought about doing that yeah i was gonna say you ain't yeah. fancy like them people use oh, that dropper. Not. we're doing a podcast in my garage for christ's sake I, hey look i love it <laughs> just this is my kind of people actually that's it <laughs> that's it uh so you're familiar with this sean some of you out there may not be I like how sean wilkinson looks up every time i say sean it's very confusing <laughs> it's, yeah it's kind of wild hey but i spell it the right way oh, oh. right oh. well it's the male derivative of the name not the female all right, ladies. <laughs> Look it up. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, but see what I got. That's why you know nobody got it. I mean, uh, that's how I am though. It's like Stephen because I do it with V and and step hen. Doesn't really make sense to me. But I know it's got more yeah. history there. Anyways, uh, it's, the, it's biblical. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, that's how my brother got Stephen with a P. Stephen. Yeah, he's Stephen. All right. So what? <laughs> we just call him Steve. <laughs> just piss him off. Um, so this is where we do the, the, the rating. We do uh, two or three ratings. Everything's out of 10. The whiskey, the cigar, and the pairing tonight is a little bit different uh, just for the simple fact that we did it kind of with the watershed last week. We have multiple bottles. So we're going to talk about, uh, guys, give kind of a, a out of 10 for each of the three. And since there's three, maybe be and not, not super brief, but a little bit more brief here. 
and then 10, 10 uh, out of 10 for the uh, cigar and then also for the pairing. And with the pairing, you can either do it individually or talk about how the cigar kind of held up to those. And, and I think, you know, Sean, you already kind of said it where barrel three and the rye go a little bit uh, better, in your opinion, with the cigar. So um, that, that being said, Sean, give you the honor to, to start off. So out of 10. Oh, I got to go before the Russian judge. That's it. Yes, because oh, you're the guest of honor. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's let's sit here a little while longer. It won't be an honor. No, uh, so I, I still I, I'll stand by I don't, my statement. Uh, so, I, I say I've drank a lot of stuff in my life. Uh, so, just based off that, I would have to say um, I'm gonna go backwards. Okay. The rye is probably the favorite, my most favorite thing on this table. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, because no, I've had. Why do you say surprisingly? Well, I've had, I don't know, I've had bad luck with rye. I've tried rye okay. before that just don't sit well with me when I drink it. Okay. Uh, more so than just bourbon. Like you know, it's like fifty fifty. Um, I'd have to give that bottle a nine. Nice. Okay. Uh, the middle bottle there out of barrel four. I'd probably say uh, it's for me. It's up there too. It's it's awfully tasty. So it's probably a nine too. Okay. Uh, that third barrel, which is nothing, nothing's wrong with it. It's it's you know it's good whiskey too. I certainly wouldn't turn it down. Uh, but based on them three and two nines for those, that would be an eight for me. Okay. Uh, nine nine eight. Yep. And the parent would go. Well, you got to do your rating on the cigar oh, by itself. Oh, now I, um, I have had the cigar several times. Uh, I've always liked them. Uh, I think it uh, it smokes well. It uh, it tastes good. Uh, and again, having having snobs broke several times. Right. Uh, sometimes just tasting good is enough. You can't really pick out stuff. Um, I'd say the cigar is a solid eight. Nice. And then uh, I'd give it a, well, let me be like the Russian judge here. I'll give it an 8.73 with the rye. Oh. <laughs> oh. Figure these out. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I know. Out there. Yeah, no. Nah. And if you're planning I'd, a drinking game at home, you have to drink. Yeah. That, that was just for Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan yeah. Um, I'd say with the rye, I would give it about the same. I thought it would, went good with the rye, so it'd be a nine. Mm -hmm. I'd give it an eight and a half with the barrel three. <laughs> I didn't like it quite so much with the metal barrel, so probably seven and a half. For the barrel four. Yeah. I like the whiskey more by itself yeah. than with the cigar. I got you. Four. I got you. I got you. Nate, how about for you? So I'm going to start. <clears throat> I'm going to do it in the order that we drank them. Uh, barrel three, I'm going to be a 7.5. Barrel four is the middle bottle. That's the one that I report and sip it on again now. Yeah. That one, I'm going to be a, a 9.5 because that is just a tasty bottle. I love the flavor. I did good. Not a whole lot, good. not a, not a whole lot of heat. Uh, but I, that is, that is my favorite bottle of the three. Uh, and the rye. I love rice. I've had some really good ones. I'm going to give that one a nine on the rye. I really, enjoy, I really enjoy that bottle. Um, the rye and barrel four are my two favorite. That's on the table. I can relax now. You did good. No, nothing, nothing got like a five or a six. So I'm, no, no, you, I'm, you, I'm tickled. <laughs> <laughs> There you or, go. Or maybe I'm being nice because you're bigger than me. Um, <laughs> ah, that doesn't really savvy all the time in a fight. That's true. But uh, but no, these no these are very enjoyable. I mean, even before tasting barrel four and the rye, I still enjoyed barrel three. Like that was still a good and unique bottle. Um, but that that barrel four was just the flavor was so unique. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Thank you, Freddie. Um, but that rye again, with the oh, you, listeners, that when they, they hear I, your rating. I think, I, I think what now I, anymore, when you give a high rating, everyone's like, Holy shit. 
I know. And when it's a low rating, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course you fucking yeah. say that. Yeah. What, what? Yeah, like anything. So you know how I, you know how I have that spreadsheet. He's not of, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey does not like yeah. it. You know how I have the spreadsheet where you know all the bottles we've had, the cigars we've had, topics, yeah. gas, everything. Yeah. I think what I should start doing is going back, have another tab on that thing of like our ratings. <laughs> oh, you don't? I don't. I guess no. I need. I guess I need to add that. You didn't add the ratings? I, really? No, I didn't. I we didn't do the ratings. I, I added. I added this part of the, the, last the program. Year. Yeah, sometime last year when I switched it over to Streamyard actually, and I able to throw up banners and everything. Oh, else. okay. And, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yes, Todd Conley. You should believe me. I'm being honest. I don't. When I do my ratings, I don't bullshit. Um, How about the cigar? Cigar, I'm right there with Sean. I'm an eight on the cigar. Okay. I think the first time I had this cigar, I would say oh, it was probably about six years ago uh, when the first year my wife and I were going down to Lexington for the Rolex three day horse show. All right. And I remember smoking it in the car and I absolutely loved it. So when the tinderbox got these back in, I was really excited. It just didn't taste like I remembered it. Well, it's kind of like the vacation I mean, thing. You're doing a, you're doing something. Exactly. And that could be it. Um, but no, it, it's still enjoyable. I put this cigar medium, maybe uh, maybe just a little bit, tad more medium plus. Uh, okay. But uh, smooth. It's got it's a very consistent flavor. It's not complex smoke. It doesn't for me. It doesn't really change as you smoke through it. Uh, and then as far as the pairing, overall with these bottles, uh, for the pairing, I'm more of a seven, just because like what we were worried with last week with having Ann on and the high proof bottles we were drinking and smoking the Perdomo. Right. These barrel proofs, I think do overpower the cigar a little bit, but I do think this cigar does stand up a little bit more to these bottles than say that Perdomo champagne did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I got a quick question for you. <clears throat> do you like what the cigar does on your tongue after you've had a sip of the rye? I don't remember what it did. I'd oh, have to, I like that. See, I, Take a sip of the rye and then smoke. I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what that taste is, but I like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, and and there have been episodes where, like, I've smoked the cigar and then immediately drank the whiskey, and tasted something, and then waited a little bit, drank the whiskey, and then immediately smoked the cigar. And yeah. some and sometimes, depending on what the order, it might add more sweetness, might add more spice. So yeah, it, it really yeah. depends on what order you're doing and. You know, I, the don't, is. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a good hot sauce. I got you. Like, kind of make your tongue tingle a little bit. Yeah. 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 And, it, and, you know, it, it tingles a little, but it's got good flavor. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what the flavor is, per se. Yeah. But I just I just like the way the smoke rolls around your tongue after you've had the rye. That rye. Yeah. It has a little bit of that, that the whole spice aspect of it. You know what I mean? It has a lot of your sense going at that point. Right. All right. Nate, do you have anything else? No, I gave my ratings. Okay, just want to make sure. Thank you, Steve. You got it. Um, so for me, uh, the whiskeys, I, I've already, if you guys have been listening the entire time, uh, whether you're listening to the audio or if you're just tuning in live right now, um, I, I'll i start with the rye as well. That is a very surprising um, – that's very surprising. I, I'm very, very happy with that rye. That's something that I would, I would, would want to be able to – uh, go into the store and, and, and buy. You know what I mean? Know what I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, we have not talked about price at this point. Yeah. Um, Damn, I was just going to say at the end. So why, you bring up price why are you surprised, though? So it's, it's, it's unique. That I okay. like the fact that it's unique. Um, it, it's something that, that like we talked about it, if you're, you were listening to when we were talking about that particular bottle, it has that, that subtle sweetness. Um, Sean mentioned like that kind of the maple syrup, but there's a, a warm spice to it. There's this, um, and, and I even said it almost it, like that first sip, especially after I'm back on the barrel floor with a little bit of water, which I do like a, a drop of water in that a little bit more than I did originally. But with that one, when I went to it, I not maybe it was the timing of the fact that we were talking about, um, you know, colas and stuff like that, but it was almost like it was carbonated the way that that, 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 um, spice it's not pepper it's not burn it was just this weird like to your point with the cigar with the rye sean it, it when you took a sip of that or when i took a sip of that um it almost had that kind of like 
not completely flat cola. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not as carbonated as it should be, you know, when you first yeah. crack a can or crack a bottle or anything like that. But it's almost like, oh, it's got that sweet, but a little bit slight yeah. bitter, it's like a, spice. But it, it gave me this, like it had just a hint of carbonation to it, the way that it hit the, the, the back of my palate and throat. Yeah, it's like that thing at the potluck you can't identify, but it tastes good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly right. And who, and who brought it? Give me the recipe. Um, <laughs> what is the price? <laughs> we got we got Todd Conley out there pricing on the bottles. And I well, typically, like I say, you can only get them at the distillery. Correct. I'm assuming and the they're fact small. that they're small and it's only and there. And it's the only way they're making their money. I'm going to guess so, they're pushing $100. If you, go, if you go and buy that size bottle, it's $150. 150 a bottle. Oof. Oh, wow! Now you All can right. get smaller bottles. Do you pay for the tour down. as well? Just out of curiosity. Uh, 25 bucks. 25 bucks for the, and if you want to buy a bottle, yeah, they're they got, all the same. Yeah. 150 flat. No, the size of the bottle. They this they, is the fifth, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. So they have the fifth is the biggest bottle, and then they have like a moonshine bottle, and they have a flask bottle, and I think there was one other size bottle. Probably a pint, but I didn't, right? Three seventy-five. Yeah, like I that. didn't. I didn't really pay much attention to them. How much was the smallest bottle? So that way we can get a, a range of the prices. I don't know if wow. I was guessing. I would say fifty, fifty-five bucks. Okay. So it's truly a, a, a single barrel, mm -hmm. barrel strength on yes. all of them. Right. Um, we we saw this with uh, Bourbon Thirty. I was thinking that the so, Jay Mattingly stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jay Mattingly yeah. stuff does kind of the same thing where they had like their own, like it's, it, it sounds very similar um, as far as the process of, of buying a bottle. Those were all north of a hundred dollars, if I recall. Yeah. yeah. And they were, they're all very high proof and they were, they were kind of a similar, um, not necessarily a tour necessarily, not the facility, but just the overall product where you're buying $150, throwing that in there. So Todd Conley's out there, you know, for this, off the, off the rip, I was going to give the the rye all things considered without the price, give it like a it's a, it's a, it's a just north of nine for me. Um, with the price being involved, I mean maybe south of, of nine because that that's that's a hefty price tag on a bottle on a fifth. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to that to that point though, I've I've already said before I knew the price. It's very unique and I really enjoy it. Yeah, hundred fifty for share. me. It's good. What? It'd be a good share. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because this is something that no one's had um, typically Probably in your, your, your bourbon circles. Going on to the, the barrel number four. Um, now that I know the price, this is this is isn't why me. no one bring up the price. No, that's fair. No, that's fair. Um, but I, I, I was pretty clear that this this bottle for me was not, or this this barrel for me was not really my cup of tea. If I was doing the sampling and yeah. say they were all for the, for a fifth, they're all the same price, I wouldn't have picked that one. But yeah. you guys both really liked it. So that, right. that goes to show you that every, everyone's a little bit different. Well, see, um, these, these three barrels I just picked for y'all. Nice. Because <laughs> it's the highest proof bottles and the lowest amount of corn. That's not why, though. <laughs> why'd, why'd you pick them? Then I'll get back to mine. I, well, I picked them because out of all the, one, out of the five I tasted, these were the three that I thought tasted the best to me. Yeah. So then I just thought, well, you know, these, these people have been doing this a long time. So let me just see, you know, if I'm just drinking to drink or if I'm drinking because I – I believe what I said. We'd have been grateful no matter which bottle you brought us. <laughs> oh, well. You brought us one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm glad to have you on to do this with us. And, you know, you were just bringing them by just to, to, yeah, I was just, you know, I didn't really, really amazing. think that I was going to be on the thing. Well, I think part two, for those of us in, well, uh, they're going to, they're going to know why I asked you to be on. With, yeah. with that being said, uh, barrel number four, I would give that one, me personally, an eight. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not, not as, not not really in agreement with you guys on that one. Barrel three, which I was going to take another sip out of that if I could. I, I like that one. I'm glad we started with that one. That was in, in, in the beginning of the, the uh, episode. I, I went into a little more depth on that one. I'd give that an eight and a half. Okay. So um, cigar, I, I'm kind of with you guys. It's a, it's an eight. I'd give it an eight and a half just because it's a solid smoke. When when you hear the, the blend of this tobacco that they used for this, if I read that first, much like you're talking about, like the price and everything else, like if I had the information yeah, so before I smoked it, yeah. it costs around $10, ten, ten ninety five. Oh, okay. this cigar? 11? I thought the I thought the little one that we had was eleven ninety five. Okay. I thought this one was like thirteen ninety five. I'll think. look it back up if I can find it here as I'm talking. But 
Um, I don't think it's that much. I shouldn't have asked. I don't. No, you I don't really care if I like it. I don't really. I don't well, really clearly. Care about it. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. My hey, granddaddy I, always told me. If, I gave if, my ratings without knowing the price of the bottle. So <laughs> that's, my that's granddaddy fair. always told me if, if you're going in to buy something to drink, and the price is a consideration, maybe you ought not drink. Yeah. So the suggested retail originally when they first came out, it was um, basically before tobacco tax, it was eight fifty to nine ninety nine. So I, I want to say this is is in that eleven dollar range for this okay. size. This is the this is the robusto. This isn't the we ha also have the uh, Churchill, which is seven by forty nine. Okay. So we had they, they had a a Rothschild, which is a four and a half by fifty. This is the robusto, which I like this size a little bit more. Uh, bang for your buck and also just the smoking experience is a five and a half by 52 and they have we have the seven by 49 as well at the center box um but yeah i, I give it an eight and a half because i just really think that this is um it's kind of interesting because it's a unique blend i like the flavor because when they say heritage it does kind of give me just a very very classic um medium bodied cigar with flavor but it, it's when I go over the notes on this, and I didn't even read the reviews, but it's just like what I what I would expect from a a solid cigar. I mean, it's just it's just true, and it's super basic for a lot of people out there that you all want the notes and everything. This is what it should taste like. This is a, a, tastes like a cigar. This is good. To, you know what I mean? Two a.m. cigar when you yeah, sleep. Yeah, it's just good tobacco. Yeah, it's just good tobacco. So when I read all the 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 four country blend into it, I'm kind of shocked. I, I would not expect it to have a, a broadleaf uh, binder. Yeah. I would not expect Mexican tobacco in the the, the filler. Um, it, it's very unique. So, uh, yeah, eight and a half. Don't like Mexico, huh? I do like Mexico. <laughs> it's just the tobacco. It tastes. I get it. the soil's <laughs> different down there. Uh, trust me, buddy. I get it. I'm just giving you all the time. I'm aware. <laughs> the pair. Look, I grew up in a in a generation and in a career where you know I'm going to give you shit. <laughs> Another but i want you I to have you on here yeah but i want you to give me shit back because if <laughs> i don't i wouldn't give you two hoots in hell for a man that couldn't take some shit and give a little shit back that's fair uh two hoots in, in hell or and hell in hell okay uh that's not somebody i want in a foxhole with me that's fair yeah we got bobby hirschman joining the feed right now so um yeah we're smoking the party so just gave my rating on the party as heritage for the pairing i think that this cigar Again, a little different than what I think um, Nate said, especially. This one, I think, actually stood up. And I agree with Sean that it pairs I like better. It, with the rye. it pairs better with the rye. And I just I just poured and did not put a dash of water, which I'm going to, in, the, in barrel three, which I'm reviewing. I uh, reviewed last. I think this is the rye and then the barrel three. It, they're just warmer. They're, yeah. they're like, I, I go back to that barrel four. There's, I say tartness. It's just, hmm. This goes really well. The cigar does stand up. In fact, I think it complements, I agree with Sean, it complements Barrel 3 and the uh, 8-Year Rye uh, a great deal more than the Barrel 4. I don't think that that's a pairing. If we just had one one bottle on here and it was the Barrel 4 and we were smoking the part against Heritage, I don't think I'd rate it. I'd, I'd give that like a 7 uh, as far as yeah. the pairing. All in all, with the whole lineup, I think a solid 8. I think it stood up. I think having a medium body cigar this week as opposed to we had the mild Perdomo 10th anniversary champagne last year. Or last week, I think this one with the barrel three and the rye, I give it a nine as far as the pairing goes with that. Yeah, I really think that this is just very, very uh, pleasant. Like so, I say, I don't, I don't know if it shows up on the on the camera, there. and if it don't, I'm sorry. But that's if you're drink, if you're a whiskey drinker, that's just a beautiful color. Yeah, uh, that, if, that you like, like if you like, looking, if, a, like yeah, a, if you like looking, used to be if you like looking at something in your cup that says, "Hey, I got something for you." I, that's the one. I just um, went back to that rye. Holy cow! It, it the flavor's just more intense. Which is your favorite? So my favorite's the rye. I agree with you on that one. Number two would be the barrel three. Number four, and it's a distant number four for me. I agree with what you're saying as far as what's in the bottle. Like looking at it, I think that it's going to be something that I just really think that, that is it. Like rye, barrel three, and, and then barrel four. But again, I, I got to just remind everyone that. When I say that, where the barrel four is a distant number three out of these three, you guys both really love barrel four. I I, I do, and that's I, so that's the whole thing. And and maybe some of it is that color. It's that look, you know, like I don't really care what it tastes like. I'm, I'm more like that because yeah. it looks good. Yeah, it's kind of like a pretty woman. <laughs> it's it's more on the outside than what's inside. 
at the start with, yeah. And then you get, and then you, and then you have that, that relationship. That at least you buy it off the yeah, shelf. Yeah, right. And then you have that conversation, and then you start having them conversations, and you go like, God, what was I thinking? And then, Which I'm and sure then to it's your the same point, way you, for women. Now, then, don't get me point. wrong. That's, that goes both ways. That just doesn't go man to, man to woman. That goes woman to man as well. In the middle of the conversation, like, what was I thinking? And then, then, she, then she smiles, and you're like, that's that's yeah. a good looking bottle so right I, there. Which, which is your favorite lift? Well, so so not the rye. So so that's Steve's favorite right there in that order uh-huh. from his side of screen towards me. Right. My favorite is barrel four, then the rye, and then barrel three. Okay. So mine is this right. one, that one, and then barrel three. Okay, well then, so if there's anything left, then you know those stay with y'all anyway. Well, that is, I'm not, I'm not taking. Them wow, Gosh, that's. Thank you very much. So you know, but that's that's you know, if, we'll try to work off the middle barrel there, so you you can keep some of this thing. <laughs> fair enough. Fair How's enough. How's that? Uh, that's that good. Thanks, that's brother. very generous. You get some in your glass, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I don't mind it. Uh. Well, it's very generous of you and, and very, very, very um but now the thank you. The two bottles I bought for myself I've already finished. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, I do want to yeah. thank our sponsors for uh the, the podcast and as we end out uh, part one here. And uh, I do uh, ask forgiveness for everyone out there as far as the video quality, for whatever reason, it's just not cooperating tonight. So hopefully you can hear us all right because this is definitely a good conversation and as we get into the second part, I think it's going to be fantastic. In fact, I might even uh, restart it here and, and, and try it. We can see it part part two here. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so Tinderbox at Easton for the Part of Ghost Heritage. Uh, go back and, and listen to our review on that. And also, Altidus USA, we've got a Romeo Julieta, the uh, Reserva Real Nicaragua, that is uh, blended and, and manufactured by uh, AJ Fernandez, along with Rafael Nodal. And then uh, also, be a cigar company. The gold should be arriving, hopefully, in the next four weeks. And then also there'd be a silver made by Espinosa. Um, that is something that I've got available right now. So, and also patreon.com. I'll throw that up here, guys. This is how actually, you know, Sean Anderson came. I, I don't even know how he came. We'll, we'll talk about that in part two, but came across the podcast. And then since then, he's become a patreon.com slash bourbon BS podcast supporter. He has uh, ordered cigars from Tinderbox at Easton. It's, it's that synergy that's just fantastic. And now he's sitting in the garage, the call sack in Columbus, Ohio, uh, sharing some whiskey with us and good conversation. And I hope you guys really stay tuned for part two here. But uh, it, it's it's just a nice, nice community. And then also uh, he's a big part of the uh, Bourbon and BS community page on on Facebook as well. So, yeah, guys. I ain't, I ain't oh, real swooped on all the technology stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you're good enough. So, guys, cheers to part one. Stay tuned for part two. Uh, if you guys lose this on the feed, it might just be because I'm going to be resetting some things, hoping that we have better uh, connection for you guys on part two. Cheers. Cheers. What do you guys think? Uh, well, I'm just, no, I'm good. All right. Uh, there's some seals you don't crack. <laughs> not, not, not at my age. Not with all the stuff not I got going age, on. Huh? Yeah, not at all. Uh, <laughs> I got stuff going on in Oregon you wouldn't believe, but that's you know, medicine the government gave me in places I've been to. There you go. So I am going to do that, guys. If you guys are listening live right now, we got about a dozen or so give or take uh, listeners right now. I'm going to repost uh, part two here. I'm going to uh, kind of reset everything as far as technology, hoping that that works well with StreamYard. So guys, um, stay tuned and and re uh, look us up here, and uh, we'll we'll continue with part two here in the next uh, hopefully five minutes. Cheers. Yeah, Ray, you'll never understand me. Mm-hmm. <laughs>